Good morning, all. I am Kiran Pachalasia, Assistant Professor at Sagar Institute of Research and Technology, Bhopal, the Sage Group. Today, we are going to discuss on Type 1 Grammar. So, in previous video, we have already seen that uh, Chomsky hierarchy, because whenever we are starting from uh, any type of grammar, first of all, we have to clear in our mind that what is Chomsky hierarchy and where it exists. So, today we are going to discuss a type 1 grammar. In Chomsky hierarchy, type 1 grammar is formed after context-free grammar. We already seen in previous video what are context-free grammar, which automata it accepts and what type of language we have to reach. In Chomsky hierarchy, there are four types of grammar. Unrestricted grammar, which are totally accepted by Turing machine. Type 1 grammar, which we are going to discuss today briefly, which are accepted by linear bounded automata. Type 2 grammar, that we already discussed, context-free grammar, and that are accepted by push-down automata. Type 3 grammar, regular grammar. These two topics, context-free grammar and regular grammar, we already discussed in brief. Regular grammar accepted by finite automata. So let's move on. Context-sensitive grammar, it is known as type 1 grammar. Context-sensitive grammar, is used to represent context-sensitive language. Now, the term context-sensitive language, what these types of language and what type of syntax it has. So, this is an example where context-sensitive language have. We are able to see that the left-hand side, we have a single variable, two variables, single variable or more time we have a terminal with a variable. Formal definition of context sensitive grammar. The formal definition of context sensitive grammar is as follow. Uh, as previous, we have seen context free grammar have four tuple VTPS as usual. Context sensitive grammar also have four tuples N, sigma, P and S where N represent non-terminal symbols. Sigma represents set of terminals. P represents set of production rules and S represents the starting symbol of any grammar. In the context sensitive grammar, Rules or productions are in the form of alpha, a, beta, tends to alpha, gamma, beta. Where alpha is element of n, n is what? Variable or we can say it is non-terminal. Alpha and beta is an element of n union. Sigma n means variable. Union of all the input symbol which we are, we are using in the grammar. Gamma is an element of n union sigma oh sorry this is a star means the power of n union sigma and a is a non-terminal non-terminal as we know variables are called as non-terminals rules of type 1 grammar or context sensitive grammar number one the context sensitive grammar men have more than one symbol on the left hand side of their production rule. As I can say in the previous slide that in the example, left hand side we can have more than one variables. Second one, the number of symbol on the left hand side must not exceed the number of symbol on the right hand side. Okay, the condition is only that the left hand side, if we have two symbols, then we have to, uh, in the production, we have to see two at least two symbol on its right hand side rule number three a produce if a produces f epsilon is not allowed unless a is a starting symbol uh, as in previous grammar we already seen that if a produces epsilon then a is not the starting symbol number four type one grammar has to be in type zero we all knows in chomsky hierarchy type one grammar 
has to be in type 0, type 2 grammar has to be in type 1 plus type 0, and type 3 grammar has to be in type 2, has to be in type 1, and has to be in type 0. In the type 1 production should be in the form of V produces T, we all know that the count symbol in V is less than or equal to T. Uh, here is the example of context sensitive grammar. Suppose P is a set of rules and a context sensitive grammar. Okay. G equals to S, A, B. These are variables. A, B, C, small are terminals. A, B, C are the symbols. P is a production and S is the starting symbol. Correct. S produces capital A, capital S, B, C. This is the first production. As we see, S produces A, B, C. Similarly, we can see C produces, C, B produces B, C. It means the second rule we can see when left hand side have two variables, so right hand side should have at least two variables. Next production is small a, capital B, tends to A, B. Okay. Small b, capital B, tends to B, B. B, C tends to B, C. C, C produces small c, c. So, as we can see, when we reach to a point, when we get some language, so what type of language it will generate? It will generate number of A equal to number of B equal to number of C by A followed by B followed by C. And all the numbers are greater than or equal to 1. Properties of context sensitive language are the union part, the intersection part, and the concatenation part of two context sensitive language is context sensitive language. The clean plus of the context sensitive language is context sensitive. Okay, we all know every context sensitive language is recursive. Obviously, when we see the Chomsky hierarchy type, Zero grammar includes type 1, type 2, and type 3 grammar. So there is the property. Complement of context sensitive grammar is context sensitive. Obviously, context sensitive grammar, if we have some kind of language, its complement is also in context sensitive. Now, the automata which who accepts the context sensitive language is called linear bounded automata. A linear bounded automata is a multi-track non-deterministic Turing machine. It is a type of Turing machine which has a tape of some bounded finite length and the length equals to function length of initial input string and one constant. The computation in the linear bounded automata is restricted to the constant bounded area. In the next slide, we see the um, pictures of linear bounded automata, how it's work. The import alphabet here contain two special symbols that serve in left end marker and right end marker. These are the two special kind of thing which not P PDA has, not FA has. It explains that transition neither move to the left or of the left end maker or not to the right, right end maker tape. So this is the diagram where we easily see here in linear bounded automata. This is left end marker and this is right end marker and the working space is between both markers. Okay. Now, move on to linear bounded automata tuples. So, linear bounded automata contains nine tuples. The nine tuples are Q, Sigma, E, del q0 gl gr gl gr already we have seen in previous picture left bounded tape right bounded tape f so we all know that q is set of all states sigma is input symbol e here is new input alphabets okay del is set of transition q0 initial state g and r already we have discussed f is set of final state uh, the new things here uh, introduced are E, GL, and GR. So this is the new thing, halting problem. Uh, I think uh, I'm a little fast.
to discuss about halting, halting problem, but it is uh, connected with some of the problems. Halting means that program on certain input will be accepted and some inputs is put in halt. Halt means it will never go into infinite loop. Basically, halting means terminating the program. So, in terms of Turing machine, will it terminate when run on some machine with particular given input string? We can see. When we are giving some inputs, we don't know what to certain time the program it should be in halting. So, the answer is no. We cannot design a generalized algor algorithm which can appropriately say that a given program will ever not halt. Okay, we only say that we'll try. The way only to run a program and check whether it halt or not, only single way, because we have run the program, we can re refrain the halting problem question in such a way also, given a program written in some programming language like C, C++ or Java, will ever get into an infinite loop or will always terminate. So, halting problem basically says that Whenever we are going to discuss a program or a string, what we have to do? We have to first run program in some basic languages. Then we can say this program should be halt, terminate. So this is all about halting problem. Then and, and this is an unpredictable problem because we cannot have an algorithm because all we have to do is to first run the program, check the proper algorithm, then we go to certain language and then we run the program and then we have got the conclusion that we have to reach some position or the program is in, got in the infinite loop. So this is all about today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned and keep watching, keep learning.